The Eldari Craftworlds of Warhammer 40,000 feature some of the most intimidating models for new painters and experienced hobbyists alike. Awkward assembly, big smooth surfaces, curves and quirky details. In this video, we're going to show you some quick, easy techniques that you can apply to your own Eldar walkers, vehicles and ground troops. I'm Guy and this is Penny. Hello! And you're watching Midwinter Minis. Let's get started! Oh, that's a very theatrical intro by the way. Thanks. You're welcome. The first thing to consider when you're building craft world models is that the big models you get in the start collecting box have lots of weapon options. These are very easily magnetised with just a little bit of snipping and drilling. That way, you can swap out your weapons to suit the enemies you'll be facing. We won't go into that just now though, as it's a bit of an advanced technique. We'll cover that in another video at some point. The other thing that makes creating a cool paint scheme nice and easy is to keep the heads separate before you start painting. Guy's just attached these with some blue tack, so he can easily remove them whenever he wants while painting. Eldar Warwalkers also feature lots of parts you want to keep separate for easy painting. Don't glue the clear plastic cockpit cover, the weapons, the waist joint, the little weapon mounts or the pilot's head. To get the parts ready to prime and so you don't have to touch them, cut up short sections of kebab skewer or something similar and use blue tack or some other putty to secure the heads. For the colour scheme we chose, I primed the heads white and the rest of the parts black. The HQ from the Star Collecting Box, the Farseer, I'll be painting in another video. If you want to follow along eventually, I primed him entirely white. Now, I want these ghost robots to be mostly blue, but I want to avoid the usual trap of base coat, wash, highlight. I'll show you how to make an interesting, complex blue with a smooth look, nice and easy. I'm going to start with purple to make an interesting colour for the recesses, and for the other blues to interact with. Using a big old soft brush, lightly paint all of the models, but don't worry too much about getting into all of the recesses. It's okay if there's some black in the darkest, deepest bits. Next, I'm going to start dry brushing a solid blue colour, Vallejo's medium blue in this case, in mostly up and down strokes, rather than side to side. <laughs> Gentle up and down strokes. Doing this will start to create directional shadows where your brush just doesn't hit, and this will make it look much more interesting later on. Try to get lots of paint off your brush on something absorbent before you start doing this. You don't want to splat loads of blue on and just be pushing it round. You're just trying to catch the raised areas. Here's what the two stages look like side by side. Next, we're going to introduce a bit of green into the mix. You can do this by manually mixing colours, but if you're going to be painting a whole army in a style like this, you might want to get a few specific paints to make it easy. For this step, we'll be using Vallejo Blue Green. And we'll basically do the same again, but try to get even more paint off your brush first, and be a bit more sparing than we were with the blue. Remember, only up and down strokes! <laughs> Did you write this intentionally? <laughs> no. Here's that blue-green step compared to just the blue, starting to look interesting, but one more stage will really sell the effect. For this, we're using Citadel Gauss Blaster Green, and just using the same technique as the previous stages, but trying to catch just the sharpest edges in the most prominent parts. As you can see, it's a really fast, easy way of making smooth colour transitions on large, curvy surfaces. Usually, you'd need carefully layered highlights, wet blending, or airbrushing, but we've achieved a similar effect on all of these models in about an hour. Some areas on flatter panels might look a little bit scratchy or dusty, or if you were a bit lazy with the seams where the parts fit together, the dry brushing might have accentuated some ugly bits. No problem, just thin your blue paint, the second one we used for the armour, thin it well, about two drops of water to one drop of paint, and use this thin glaze to knock back that scratchiness on any smooth panels. It'll look quite stark when you put it on, but it'll dry very transparent as it's so diluted. If you get any on parts you didn't mean to, just use a clean, dry brush to tap away the paint straight away. Now we've got the armour sorted, let's move on to the heads. The Warwalker doesn't have a head as such, so we've decided we're going to apply the same effect to the top panel of the body to keep it cohesive with the rest of the team. We'll need to prime it white, so to avoid ruining all that lovely armour Guy just painted, we'll mask it off. Guy cut a hole in a piece of paper about the same size as the body, test fit it, and slid it through. That'll mostly cover it. To mask off the other bits, just use blue tack again. Seriously, guy could not live without blue tack. Smush it into place with the end of your paintbrush and spray it white. To keep things fast, line up your heads on a piece of card so you can work on them all at the same time. Batch painting makes the process very efficient. 
To create a sort of holographic opalescent effect, I'll be using these nail art flakes. They cost just a little bit more than a standard pot of paint, and the process is pretty simple. The first step is to paint all of the parts you want the flakes to stick to with a gloss varnish. I'm using Citadel's Art Coat for this. As soon as you've painted the heads, immediately crack out the nail flakes while the varnish is still wet, and using a cotton bud, scoop some flakes and tap them onto the heads. You can add more if you want a really pronounced effect, but I wanted some white still visible, so I added them mostly in the central upper parts of the heads. Once you've applied them all, you can go back with your cotton bud again and agitate the flakes a bit. This will break them up and create some more subtle glittery effects around the main shiny bits. Give that about 20 minutes to make sure the first layer of the gloss varnish is dried, and then apply another layer of varnish on top to seal in all those flakes and make the surface nice and smooth. Very important step. Clean up after you use the nail flakes or you'll find glitter literally everywhere for weeks. Now for the big reveal. How bad was the two minute masking? Pretty good actually. A little bit of white on his arm, but we can fix that no problem. Guy then used a cocktail stick to get the fiddly bits of blue tack off so it wouldn't scratch the paintwork underneath. Now, there are little bits on the underside of the wraith heads that will be visible, and we'd quite like them to match the armour, so Guy painted up those parts using the same paints and steps as before, but painting traditionally with a more precise brush. On the big wraith knight head, it's possible to carefully dry brush without catching the main part of the head. Okay, moment of truth. A little dab of super glue on the neck connection and attach the heads. Looking great. Now let's paint up those dangly crotch flags. My favorite. Again, avoiding the common trap of paint wash highlight, we're just going to build up the highlights naturally and use the brush strokes themselves to make it look like fabric. First, we'll start with a base coat of blue green. We'll need two coats to make this nice and solid. The good thing about batch painting is that once you've done the last one, the first one will probably be dry again and ready for the second coat. If not, you can use your very manly hair dryer to get them ready. <laughs> so cute. Don't worry about getting paint on these gun cable-y things, by the way. We'll paint those later, so just smoosh your brush around them to make sure you get all the flag bits. Now we've got a solid coat, we'll mix that blue-green with Gauss Blaster Green in a 50-50 mix, thin nicely so it flows well and dries slightly transparently. We're just going to paint smooth streaks up and down, trying to accentuate the flow of the fabric, staying mostly on the most prominent raised parts rather than going into the creases. Add a bit more Gauss Blaster Green into the mix, keep it nice and thin, and do it again, but be a little bit more picky with where you place your vertical brush strokes. Finally, using just pure Gauss Blaster Green thinned with water, catching only the most prominent bits, add a few light strokes here and there for the final highlight. As you can see, this gives you a really vibrant, smooth texture fabric that's a nice contrast from all those grim dark cloaks in 40k. My god, isn't it? So bored of all that brown. Another thing to consider if you want your army's colours to really pop is the colour of your bases. To accentuate the blues and greens, I suggested a deep muddy red terracotta type colour. To make this colour, Guy mixed Vallejo Saddle Brown and Scarlet Blood, thinned it nicely and totally covered the bases. These models have quite wide stances, so it's easy to avoid accidentally painting their feet. Again, once you've finished the last one, the first one will be dry again, hopefully. Once it is dry, Add a drop or two of white paint into that mix and lightly dry brush the desaturated earthy pink onto the sharp bits and the textured parts. By the way, the bases on the Wraith Guard were just made with chipboard offcut sand and aquarium gravel. Nice and easy. Now let's fix that messy bit of paint on the Wraith Guard's gun cable things. We don't really want any mad contrasting colours here, just a nice simple grey and then lightly dry brushed with an off-white to bring out the texture a little bit. Okay, time for the last red hot tip of this video. Literally a red hot tip. Wink. We're gonna paint up this Wraith Knight sword to look like it's hot forged metal. There are lots of ways of doing this that are quite time consuming, but I'm gonna show you a really speedy way. To achieve this technique, it'll be much easier if you have a triad of fiery colors on the go like this, a deep red, a hot orange, and a yellow. The first step is to get a nice base coat of deep red. Give it two coats just to make sure it's nice and solid. Now you're going to need an old small brush that's way past its best. Old synthetic brushes that get beaten up through the years tend to end up looking a bit like this, but they're still useful. 
dab that into your orange paint and start to stipple this colour onto the blade. Although you should concentrate mostly on the middle, it doesn't matter too much if you go a little bit towards the edges, just try to keep lots of that nice deep red showing. Next, mix yellow into the fiery orange and do the same thing again, but aiming more towards the centre. Now it's time to grab a more precise brush and thin out your yellow paint with a bit of water and start to scratch on little areas of yellow around the central part of the blade. Again, it's thin, so even though it looks really stark now, it'll dry much more subtly. Now do the same thing again, but with yellow and white mixed. Thin it well with water and add this brightest highlight to a few select areas in the middle. So, that's the heat. Now let's add the dark crust parts on the cooler areas at the edges. Mix brown and black paint in equal parts, thin it so it flows nicely, and add random scratch effects like this to the edges. This technique is great to learn brush control, as it doesn't really matter if you're super accurate, you're trying to be messy and imperfect here. Using the edge of your brush is a little bit easier for controlling where the paint goes, rather than sketching with the tip. To finish off the effect, use the same colour paint to paint on some little flecks here and there in the centre of the blade. Finally, I gave the rims a couple of coats of a nice deep brown colour, and, well, we're done. A whole start collecting box, minus the farseer, painted up to a battle ready standard in just a few hours, in a really striking colour scheme that's sure to get lots of attention at your gaming store. You can obviously use these tips on their own for whatever army you like, or go into as much detail as you like with your own models, accentuating the weapons or painting gems. Now speaking of gems, towards the end of our speed painting Aradia Medellin video, I cover a really easy way of making a nice gem effect. If you want to check that out, I'll link it at the end of the video. In the future, we'll be making a video that covers lots of different ways of painting gemstones, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. For my personal army, I'm going to paint a gemstone on a squad or model that destroys a unit in the game to give it a nice narrative spin, like their Capturing Soul Skyrim style. While you watch these lovely turntable shots, we'd like to thank all of our newest patrons. Thomas, Mark Garcera, Draumo Draca, Jack Money, Happy Mix, Tomas Ivan, Henry Simon, Gustav Jan, Eric Romero, Will Silva, Jason Tetro, Baptiste Miel Matias, Sam Boddington, Gonna Get Ya 76, JK Milk Robotics, Matt Dutton, Louise Pie, Sharpster25, Zach Martin, Empyrean Carboy, Carlos Freelove, Royce Griffin, Barleyman, Alex Kinchin, Ella Benti, Justin D, Dries Halmhouts, Murray Court, Perfect Question, Scott Leeper, Jay Glover, Jeffrey Reynolds, Totally Jacked Up, Peppery Justice, Wayne Proctor, Oniko Fora, B Norris, Big Adventures Miniature Worlds, Amazing Fluttershy, Nicholas Macbeth, Clayton Ball, Alexander Phillips, Jeremy Spurlock, Matthew Lillian, Torkil, Gucci Monologue, and Bane of Chaos. I committed to Midwinter Minis as a full-time job a couple of months ago, and I've been really blown away by the support. Thank you so much. Leave a comment to let me know what techniques you're going to use on your own armies, and what details and personal touches you'll be adding too. And we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Bye! These are very easily magneted to... to, to, to <laughs> How do you say it? Magnetized. <laughs> <laughs> Magnetitized. <laughs> Magnetitized. <laughs>